Hi, I'm Michelle Shelfont, psychotherapist, holistic life coach, and human, just like you, learning to navigate life's challenges. With over 25 years experience, I teach people how to get healthy using the adult chair model. The adult chair model is where simple psychology meets grounded spirituality, and it teaches us how to become healthy adults. From anxiety and depression to codependency and relationship issues, you can use the adult chair for just about anything. Each week, I share practical tips, tools, and advice from myself and a wide range of experts on how to get unstuck, how to live authentically, and how to truly love yourself, all while sitting in your adult chair. Welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast. I am Michelle Shelfont. Happy to be here with you today and talking about grounding. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard me talk about this over the years, but this is the guy. I'm really excited. This is someone I've I've known about and followed for many years. His name is Clint Ober. He's the CEO of EarthFX. It's a research and development company in California. Anyway, Clint knows grounding. He has done studies on how it affects the body. He started out in the early 1960s in cable TV. Yeah, that's where he learned all about grounding. And then this developed over the years when he himself became ill and he wondered if the human being could actually be grounded, much like he learned when he was in the cable TV business. And lo and behold, guess what? He found that not only when you ground a human being properly, it reduces chronic pain and also improves sleep and so much more. We got into a big conversation today all about grounding. I know you're going to love this. And let me just tell you something. He has all these products now. So even if you're living where there's a ton of snow and you cannot go outside and put your feet on the ground, oh my gosh, grounding mats and we get into all of it. But more importantly, he really gets into helping us to understand all about grounding and why it is so important that we as humans ground every single day and the impact of not being grounded, what that does to our health. So... I cannot wait for you to hear the show. Here we go with Clint Ober. So welcome to the Adult Share Podcast, Clint Ober. Well, thank you for having me, Michelle. I'm uh, looking forward to this. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to having a little bit of fun visiting with you today. We are going to have some fun. <laughs> no doubt about it. This, this topic is um, near and dear to my heart. It's something that I talk about a lot with, with my audience here. It's something I've done on my own independently, even as a teenager, which was very, Mm -hmm. very, very long time ago. I can tell you that, but, um, grounding earthing, all the things we're going to get to it today. Ask you, what is the difference when you're talking about grounding? Cause you also talk about earthing. So is there a difference? I just, I think feel like we need to distinguish this. Yeah. Earthing is to stick, stick something in the earth. So okay. electrons can flow into the earth or from the earth. Got it. Grounding is taking two objects and putting them together so that okay. they equalize and have the same electrical potential. Grounding does not have to be connected to the earth. But in America, it's a slang term and everybody interchanges the word grounding for earthing. But right. the correct the correct name is earthing. You're going to earth, you, you're going when you ground the body, you're going to earth the body. So, so then when we walk barefoot on the earth, that is grounding. That is earthing. That is grounded to the earth. We're grounded to the earth. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. So, okay. So I, I just, I, I chose earthing because it was more female, more earth. Yeah. And, yeah. and more natural. And it was about the earth. It wasn't about electrical wires, but the men, exactly. love, men love electrical wires. And so everything is grounding to them. Yeah. But great. Yeah. So anyhow, yeah, sleep is the one of the big things, but sleep is a side effect of grounding. Mm-hmm. It's not the single thing that causes. I mean, there's, it's like <clears throat> I can go on, and you kind of can't have to tighten me in here a little bit sometimes. But, <clears throat> but I think I need to explain what grounding is first. Grounding. Yeah, let's do that. <clears throat> grounding is 
the earth has a negative surface charge. The word negative means literally no charge. Mm -hmm. um, and the electrons that compose the electrical surface charge of the earth come from mm -hmm. the sun. You know, mm -hmm. photons and proton electrons and 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 you know there's a whole lot of stuff goes on there. But mm -hmm. anyhow, so so the sun creates the electrical surface charge of the earth. And then the atmosphere of the earth, you know, we have condensation, we have water, so we have condensation, evaporation, and rain and all this. So we have a global electrical circuit. So the earth is basically electrical. And the most obvious way to uh, come to terms with it, just think about lightning. Lightning right. is a major electrical phenomenon. And before mm -hmm. modern times, it was probably the only electrical phenomenon there was. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yes. So this means that that <clears throat> there's a difference in electrical potential between the cloud, the bottom of the clouds and the earth. Mm -hmm. The earth is negative, the bottom of the cloud is positive, the top of the cloud is negative. And so <clears throat> anyhow, so there, you, there's a welling up of, of um, electrons on the surface of the earth until there's enough to enough energy to reduce an equal amount of opposite charge. Got it. In the clouds. So the earth and they well up and then when they get strong enough they can crack the plasma and then cause a fissure and then lightning goes up from the earth primarily to the clouds and discharges the clouds and then it rains and goes away and everything feels great <laughs> okay yeah it does with all the negative ions from the rain yeah. um so, so my, my i just want to ask you so my question is though so humans that are you know we've got the clouds we've got the planet earth below us as we walk around you're saying barefooted on the earth that mm -hmm. creates the ground. And what you found in your studies was fascinating to me that the development of sneakers, the rubber yes. shoes that we wear that created. And what year was that? That would, did you say that was. Well, we invented plastics in, you know, 59. Yeah. 1960. So 65 years ago. Yeah. And that's when we stopped grounding. Because are, are you saying like you were a cowboy, you wore the leather boots. Does that mean that we ground through leather? Yeah. Leather is, is a semiconductor. Yeah. Interesting. That's fascinating. Do you remember either reading that in your book or watching it on your movie? Um, that fascinated me. So yeah. then, and you, and if, if you look at studies, we have gotten sicker over time. Oh yeah. It's dramatic. See, like you dramatic, have... you know, and I'm yeah. thinking it's cell phone radiation, microwave ovens, like all, all, all the thing, all Wi-Fi. We didn't have that before, but we were getting sicker before those things were even invented. Oh yeah, it, no, that you know, everybody's kind of chasing, you know, they're they're jumping down the wrong rabbit holes. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, so your theory though is that we we when those sneakers were created, and people started wearing all the sneakers, the rubber soled shoes. Because now, yes. I mean, there's a lot of rubber soled shoes, not just sneakers, but that's what disconnected us from the earth. And when that happened, we started getting sicker and sicker and sicker. And yeah. a sign of, of not being grounded um, is, in your opinion, you would say, is that that's just not being grounded, whether it be inflammation or any kind of disease, correct? Or to flip it, we can heal these illnesses that we're walking around with by grounding. Is that what you would say? Let me just go back a little further and start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First of all, the earth was here and an atmosphere developed on earth. Yeah. And then the amoebas crawled out and eventually, you know, plant life and animal life and all these, all of life evolved on, you know, began to evolve over millions of years on, on the planet. Yeah. And, and during all that time, they were in physical contact with the earth. So anything that's in physical contact contact with the earth that is conductive, like your skin is conductive. Mm -hmm. uh, and plants are conductive and you know all these things. So anything that is conductive and it touches the earth, it absorbs the electrical surface charge of the earth and maintains, equalizes with the earth and maintains the earth charge on the body, in the body, mm. on the cells. So okay. throughout throughout all time, we were naturally grounded. We couldn't get ungrounded if we wanted to. Interesting. Okay, now it's, yeah. not that far, it's not that far back. People did wear shoes a few thousand years ago and 
as far back as 10,000 years, but the, mm -hmm. but the majority of the people were primarily barefoot all of the time and they slept in the dirt. Mm -hmm. They didn't mm -hmm. sleep on fancy foam mattresses and yeah. you know, all this stuff. So anyhow, so then <clears throat> what happened was, and, and to help put this in perspective, in the animal world, cancer is rare, if at all. Mm -hmm. Animals who live indoors with their owners, they manifest the same amount of death from cancer as their owners, which is near 50%. Animals who live in, in, the, in nature, unless their habitat has been totally disturbed or destroyed by humans, cancer does not exist. And mm. if it does, it's a very rare mutation or something. So in, in nature, cancer, I mean, cancer just doesn't exist because your immune system wipes it out and doesn't allow it to happen. Interesting. And so, so anyhow, fast forward to 1950 time frame, we started putting rubber shoes, rubber on the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. tennis shoes. That's why they call them tennis shoes. And, and then in the late uh, 59, 60, they invented plastics that would actually and so the first thing they did was in as far as use in the environment for people the first thing they did is they they made these uh, synthetic carpets yeah those ugly shag green carpets and all yes. those things that used to have, but yeah but, and, and then and then we put um plastic shoes soles on everybody's shoes when I was a kid in the 40s and 50s, we were barefoot. There's no way you're going to get shoes on it unless we mm -hmm. had to go to school or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, you couldn't even get us in the house because we didn't have yeah. television. Tele Same, tele yeah. I remember. But but anyhow, the um, so here's the series of events that happened. First of all, we started putting rubber on the shoes. Then we went to synthetics. So everybody began to, now when they go outdoors, everybody could wear shoes because they could afford them. Leather shoes mm -hmm. were expensive. You had to take care of them. You didn't wear them. You didn't wear them out because you had to save them for school or church or whatever. So, so anyhow, we had this big shift where we had something that became readily available for everyone, and that was synthetic sole shoes. Mm -hmm. And then the the amount of shoes in the in 1960 were like it was like five percent were plastic and so on. And today, you know, or back in around 2000 2010, mm -hmm. now it's 99 percent of the people who wear shoes were insulated, synthetic sole shoes. Okay, so we've totally insulated ourselves from the earth when we're wearing shoes, which is most all of the time. Our mm -hmm. kids even sleep in their shoes because they love their tennis shoes now. They got <laughs> logos and stuff on them. It's crazy. But so then, and then we carpeted everything and mm -hmm. then we plasticized everything. True. Everything in your car and if you, no matter where you go, you're, you can't touch, you can't ground yourself to mm -hmm. the planet or any large object because everything is painted or insulated or shellacked or plastic you know plasticized mm -hmm. so and then television came along in the 50s which i'm guilty for some of that mm -hmm. <laughs> I, we had these wonderful visions for television and and it's coming back now because we 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 saw that one day there would be you know um narrow casting meaning everybody could have their own channel you have your own channel today. That was the vision back in, even back oh, in wow. you know, many, many years ago. And uh, <clears throat> so make the better, you know, the only way you can make the world a better place is you have to educate people. And the only way you can educate people mm -hmm. is you have to let them see how the rest of the world lives mm -hmm. and what the rest mm -hmm. of the world's about. So it's a, it's a great way to democratize all of this. Anyhow, so that's what drove the early pioneers interesting of the, of the cable television industry so <clears throat> i didn't mean to digress i have to watch that um so <clears throat> anyhow then uh, along came television and the first thing we did is we started spending more time indoors mm -hmm. watching tv last yeah. time out, when i was a kid you couldn't get us in the house yeah you had to come and get us and drag us in the house uh, mm -hmm. we would rather sleep in the barn <laughs> with the, right with the, with the i animals. remember i mean and, and now with the video games like nobody's outside in cell phones like who's you can drive down a street 
in the middle of the day, if school's out and you don't hardly see kids outside, even playing basketball in the driveway, like I grew up in the seventies, like where, where is everybody? Like there's no. nobody out, you know? No. And, and uh, then, yeah, but then, yeah, then it comes to the cell phone and now everybody is glued to it. Glued now to cell phone. Heads, headsets where you're going to be able to block out everything. Right. And, and they have no idea that there's such a thing as nature. <laughs> right. So, so what's the solution? Let's, let's move over to the solution. So what do we okay. need to do? Like, let's talk about someone that's listening to this right now and they're dealing with let's, I mean, lack of sleep, big time sleep issues, hormone issues. Uh, inflammation is one I know that you talk about a lot, um, chronic inflammation and pain. So your, so your theory is, or your theory, I mean, I, I have watched all your, I mean, I know so much about what you do, but by getting grounded, you can really start to turn that around, if not even yeah. heal yourself. Yeah, there's, there's one thing that you have to know first. Grounding is only about one thing. You mm -hmm. can't have inflammation in a grounded object. Wow. Whether it's, whether it's a TV amplifier, a cat, a dog, a cow, a deer, an antelope, or, or a human, by, human being. If they're grounded to the earth, they're being charged with earth tree electrons, and they reduce charge. So where does charge come from in the body? That is the question. Wow. <clears throat> so why is the body full of charge today? So we put the shoes on and we lost our ground. We lost our natural negative charge. Mm -hmm. okay. the body is, when the body is negatively charged, like standing in the grass, mm -hmm. then <clears throat> the electrons from the earth come up into the body and migrate throughout the body via the blood and so on. And, and then... You know, 15, 30 minutes later, your respiration changes, your blood viscosity normalizes, you, your demeanor changes, pain starts to drop, and all these things. So what's really happening here? So when you stand on the earth, when you disconnect from the earth, um, you have what's called an immune system. An immune system is working 24-7 all day long, mm -hmm. millions and billions of transactions. And all it does is reduce pathogens, mm. invaders, all these things that mm -hmm. we, we breathe, the air we breathe, if there's any, you know, whatever you're breathing, anything that becomes an oxidant of any kind or whatever. But anyhow, primarily the immune system, <clears throat> if you have a pathogen in your body mm -hmm. or damaged cell in your body, a neutrophil is going to sense it or the immune system is going to somehow directed, neutrophil swims over to where the pathogen is and it wraps itself around it. And then it releases what we call reactive oxygen species. And the word reactive means it's electrically charged and it's, it's so powerful that it can rip an electron away from the shell of the pathogen. That's wow. how the immune system destroys pathogens. Wow. Now, that's near the that's near the voltage of lightning on a micro miniature scale. Wow. Because hmm. You can't just go steal an electron from something. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyhow, you know, so, so now the immune system is doing what it's supposed to do, what it's been doing for a million years. Now, uh, all of a sudden, and, and we, if there's any remaining radicals, left over from an oxidative burst and that's a very crude system mm -hmm. but in nature the didn't have to worry about it because the body was grounded and it had plenty of negative charge mm. and every single cell in the body had a negative charge and especially the red blood cells mm -hmm. and and uh so if there was any remaining radicals they could within nanoseconds instantly reduce them mm -hmm. no damage no harm no foul Mm. And, then, and so the immune system, that's how the immune system works. Interesting. It, it, it works with, you know, acid hot enough wow. to destroy anything. And um, so anyhow, now, so we put shoes on. Now, all of a sudden, we start losing our negative surface charge. Now mm -hmm. you're depending on eating enough blueberries or enough of this, or enough of that, which most people don't eat enough. Don't eat. Yeah. I mean, you can't possibly eat enough of the right food. If, if, it, if no. you're not grounded, it's, it's not as potent is the right, I don't know what the right word is, but it's oh, like, yeah. great, eat all the healthy food. But if you're not grounded, yeah. it doesn't matter. You're still going right. to get sick or there's a possibility, I should say, of getting sick. 
Yes. Well, so what happens is your immune system, if there's excess radicals left over from an oxidative burst, they're only going to last for a few nanoseconds. They don't build up as free radicals in the body. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that builds up in the body is free radical damage. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so anyhow, the free radicals are sitting there floating around. They're looking for something because they're electrically charged and they're looking for, uh, you know, uh, their mate. They're, they want to discharge and neutralize, give out mm -hmm. and go back to home. So then <clears throat> if there's not enough free electrons, then they're going to steal an electron from a healthy cell, mm. damage it. Another neutrophil is going to come over, release more oxygen, more re reactive oxygen. Um, and then you're, you're still short of electrons, so you're going to damage that cell. And uh, you know, it's just a chain reaction. It goes so, on and on, yeah. So, so that's what inflammation is. The word in, inflammation is not a norm, normal term to use with the human body. Mm. The body's not. The word inflammation means in flame, on fire. In the mm. cable system mm -hmm. or anything yeah. in the electrical, we ground everything to prevent fire, to maintain electrical stability. So if someone's... So if someone's listening right now and they're saying, I've got inflammation, I've got, you know, autoimmune. I know you talk a lot about autoimmune, whatever right. it might be that they've nerve pain, whatever it might be, what would be a solution for them right now? Is it truly just a matter of, you know, getting a, you know, a, a chair in the front yard and taking your shoes off and sitting for 20 minutes or 30 minutes yeah. with your shoes off every day? Yeah. Like, what do you recommend for people? Okay, first of all, you, you meant you used the word autoimmune. They have an autoimmune disorder. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have to understand what that means. The immune system mm -hmm. is dysfunctioning. The immune yeah. system is not functioning. Because if yeah. it were functioning, you can't have cancer. You can't have any of it. You can't have any chronic uh, degenerative modern health disorder. Yeah. If, if your immune system is functioning as it was designed by nature. So anyhow, we changed the environment. So now, so yes, <clears throat> I don't care who you are. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what you've been through or what you're going through. I could go on for an hour and tell you, and, and you have to realize too, over the, over the last 25 years that I've been working on this, 99% um, <clears throat> of all of our customers are female. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the men just have a really hard time with this. If this were true, somebody would have told them, or if this is true, then I'll just go build my own because I know how to run wire and I know how to do this, which they do. And I don't have any problem with it, Yeah. but, but they don't buy products. And, you know, so, but anyhow, on the other hand, women, 75% of most all women can be diagnosed with some level of inflammation related mm -hmm. health disorder. True. Yeah. If a woman has pain in her body, she has inflammation because you cannot have pain unless you have inflammation, that you have a fire in your body and your immune system is screaming at you or your nerves saying, get me out of here. I'm on fire. Put the fire out. Get me back to normal. Yeah. So, so anyhow, if you, and I tell lots of stories to help uh, encourage women to do this, but um, the number one thing, there's, there's more to it than that. There's, what's causing the inflammation is as much a part of it as providing a solution for the inflammation. The solution is absolutely put your feet on the earth mm -hmm. and the, the electrons of the earth will slowly crawl up and migrate into your body. It happens with your blood mm -hmm. as your blood, your blood circulates in the body once a minute. And as the blood circulates, it picks up electrons mm. and you'll have, you'll increase the negative surface charge of red blood cells by almost 300%. There's a published clinical study on this on PubMed, you know, about wow. blood viscosity and grounding. And so it normalizes blood viscosity like the animals in the wild who live grounded and, and so on. So <clears throat> in, you know, 15 to 30 minutes, and, and I always tell women that, you know, this really should have been marketed as a beauty product. <laughs> every woman looks 10 years younger after she gets grounded. Wow. And, and that's why whenever we do the studies, I always tell them is, you know, when we're through, I said, please go in and in the, in the bathroom and look at yourself in the mirror because you look so much younger. And everybody looks at each other and says, oh my God, you know. Um, but what it is, as soon as you get grounded, put your feet on the earth, then as the blood circulates, it's negative. Now the blood is 
because you increase the negative surface charge of red blood cells. So mm -hmm. they're now like little negatively charged magnets. Mm -hmm. They push in and they repel each other. So the blood no longer sticks thick and sticky. Oh. Now it can get into the capillaries, oxygenate the tissue, pink up the cheeks. Wow. Pain goes away. Demeanor changes. Breathe easier. Tension automatically releases from the body. Now, so that's what grounding does. And it will do that for wow. anybody, any human being living on the earth, I guarantee you. Now, a lot of people won't recognize it maybe the way I described it because they yeah. are so mad and so angry and so upset and so distraught with life and everything in it that they couldn't possibly have time to be concerned about thinking about how they feel. <laughs> 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 but so anyhow, <clears throat> uh, the name, the, one of the main things I tried to, uh, I'll just take a short story here on, on women because I deal with women primarily and especially autoimmune disease. Fibromyalgia, which is the precursor to lupus, to AMS, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. all of these other health disorders, um, all of these inflammation related, I don't care what it is, you know, uh, whether it's arthritis, cardiovascular disease, uh, you know, cardiovascular disease is what the second cause of death, I think, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or close to it or somewhere in there, but women, more women die. Women, for, yeah, for women, yeah. yeah. So, and, you know, and there's reason for all of it, but, but basically, so... One time, uh, 20 some years ago, I was grounding a lady with MS mm -hmm. and <clears throat> the, the doctor had told me to go and check on her and see if I could help. And she, the doctor had told her, he says, what you need to do is you need to go home and you need to get uh, one of those mechanical beds that goes up and down and a big TV set because MS doesn't get any better. Now this mm -hmm. was in, in the nineties, early, mm -hmm. the late nineties, mm -hmm. early 2000. Mm -hmm. And because there wasn't much they can do. And I mm -hmm. don't know that there is today. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so anyhow, I went over and I put a um, makeshift sleeping pad on her bed, grounded her bed, uh, grounded a couple of things for her. And then I had these electrode patches uh, that we would use for acute pain. And um, <clears throat> so anyhow, her husband was there also and he had diabetes. Mm -hmm. And his legs were kind of purple. Mm -hmm. and, and I looked at him and I, and while I was helping her, I, I said, here's something, you might want to try this. Put a mm -hmm. patch on your leg and just wear it for a day or two and see what happens. Mm -hmm. anyhow, and then I left that alone. I didn't want to get in. But anyhow, so a couple of days later, uh, she called up and she said she was talking about, you know, feeling better, her color coming back. And and so on and so on. I won't get into the detail of it, but but anyhow. So I ended up uh, asking her. I said, "What what 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 happened in your life to cause yeah. MS to manifest?" And she said, "I don't know. I have no idea." I, said, I, I asked her, "Did you inherit it?" No, <laughs> nobody does, and uh, and so on. And then <clears throat> finally, she said, "Oh, you know, about three years ago, uh, I lost a son." Mm. and she was still kind of distraught over that mm -hmm. yeah and and then i every time thereafter for 20 years whenever i'm grounding especially a you know woman that's got a really like ms or something very serious i ask them what happened in your life to cause this to manifest every single time there's a story yep of loss yeah I lost my job in 208. I lost my house. I lost my boyfriend. I lost my yeah. husband. Yeah. Whatever, you know, it goes on and on and it's endless. Mm -hmm. And and what happens is they go into a um a sympathetic state, mm -hmm. fight or flight state, mm -hmm. grief, all of these things. You would know better than me what the right terms mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyhow, so they go into this state and then they're and and they're forever because they're in this fight or flight or, um, they, they, you know, they're forever cortisol, they're secreting cortisol into the yes. system. Yes, yeah. And the cortisol, as it builds, and you know, it creates anxiety, irritability, mm -hmm. can lead to depression, all those kind of things. And then, uh, and then if it goes on and on, then the 
cortisol create creates inflammation. Yeah. And so it's the thoughts in our mind. Yeah. It, that is a real problem with in so many cases. But I would say, you know, I I've just grounded one the other day. You could, I can take any woman on the planet, put an electrode patch like an EKG patch in the palm of mm -hmm. her hand, mm -hmm. connect it to a 10 foot, 20 foot call cord, go plug it into an electrical ground or a ground mode, and just sit there and watch her in 15 minutes. All of a sudden, her the pain comes down, the anxiety, the tension, the irritability comes down, mm -hmm. and she starts to breathe a little bit. And then, you know, as the pain comes down, then everything shifts. And after about 15, 20 minutes, I can honestly say, you no longer have MS. Wow. You, what you have right now is damage from MS. But as long as you are grounded to the earth, it's impossible for you to have MS. Wow. Because your body is negatively charged. And mm. MS is an inflammation-related health disorder. So it's not then even about going outside you have created, which I know I own some of your things. And like I said, I've given them as gifts to people. You are saying that your grounding um, equipment can actually help all of these illnesses. Well, yeah, because health is the body's most natural state. Yeah. If you don't have health, I mean, this is, this is your birthright. I mean, you were, mm -hmm. you were given health. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to work long and hard. Yeah. To mess it up. And your environment can speed it up. I mean, especially the environment that we have created today. We've lost our ground and our we're just totally charged with static electricity and yeah. And emotionally charged with um, and that's all electrical, mm -hmm. you know, with all of the EMFs. All of, well, EMFs are not. You know, there's no one thing that's a single problem. It's all yeah, it's together. it's everything because, right now. Yeah. yeah, because EMFs can't harm you if you're grounded. It's not possible. Oh yeah. As soon as you get grounded, then you have the Earth's energy all around your body, and it pushes away all of this environmental stuff. So how? So so. If someone just if someone doesn't want to invest in anything and they just want to start doing this every day for themselves, how many? minutes a day is necessary to, to, for someone to start feeling something. Did you say like 10 or 15 minutes if they just want to go put their feet on the ground outside? If you want to take 10 years off your life, just go outdoors and stick your feet, bare feet on the grass and hopefully in your hands too at the same time, if you can, maybe with a little bit of sunlight coming in, because that's one of our other problems. We put roofs over our heads. We no longer get sunlight and vitamin D. Yeah. And that's a real problem. But, but anyhow, so if you'll spend 15 to 30 minutes putting your hands and feet especially if it's live grass or if it's, um, you know, soil that's got a little bit of dampness to it and so on. Uh, <clears throat> then you're, then what's going to happen within 15 minutes, your blood's going to circulate 15 times and all of the blood is going to start distributing free electrons into the capillaries and mm. reducing those radicals, reducing everything, uh, normalizing the blood flow and, and all of that. And, and so then, um, so then you start looking better, you know, Mm. So you're, you're going to, you're going to notice that in 15 minutes, the longer, the better. So to answer your question, 15 minutes, any amount of grounding is good. Okay. But remember that in nature, your immune system is designed to be grounded 24 mm seven. -hmm. Yeah. And then like the animals, you can't have any of these modern health disorders. There's no deer or elk out there running around with cardiovascular disease. Right. True. Or breast cancer, or this, or that, or whatever. These mm -hmm. are environmental health disorders. We changed our environment. We became astronauts. We live insulated from the earth. We live away from the earth. And now this, this nature thing that we, you know, we are nature up walking around. Mm -hmm. You know, we are the earth. <laughs> mm -hmm. We live on the earth. We you know, it's just everything we breathe, everything is, it's all one systemic thing. Right. And you need to reconnect because it's more than just putting out the fire. It's calming the nervous system. It's hard to be mad and angry and upset when you're grounded. You got your feet on the earth. That's amazing. 
Yeah. I mean, I, I was telling you before we started, like I, every single day for years, I, I've learned about, I don't know where I learned earthing or grounding. It's been so many years, but I mean, yeah. in between calls, I, that's what I do. And I even yeah. ask my team, everyone that works with me, I'm like, I want you outside. I want you grounding. I want you to put your phone down. I don't need your laptop. I want you to go outside for 15 minutes and go stand on the earth. Um, someone that I was talking to said, well, I, I, I read, you know, you're not supposed to stand on the earth with bare feet because you get viruses because there's so many viruses on the earth. Have you heard of such a thing? Well, yeah. If you, if you don't have an immune system, if your immune system is totally blown out, ah. See, and, and, you know, look at the animals. I mean, you know, I remember one time we, we had a cow that had been with a calf and the calf had been injured and we rode up to it and it was in the winter and there was snow and everything. And, and whether well, it was an animal that had gotten a hold of this calf or a barbed wire, I don't know. But anyhow, there's a big rip in the mm -hmm. side of the intestines and part of the intestines Ooh. were falling out. Oh my gosh. And there wasn't anything we could do except my dad did have some uh, saddle thread and so on. So he took and just sewed the calf up with his hands, dirty hands, no, no, san no sanitations, nothing. And then there was nothing we could do because it was too far to try to carry it. And the injury was, you wouldn't have been able to put it over a horse. So anyhow, a couple of weeks later, we're out here, here's this calf out there running around like nothing ever happened. You tell me. <laughs> yeah. How does that well, happen? It, yeah. It's yeah, on it the was earth. Only, it was only what, a couple 150 years ago, the doctors started washing their hands before they started doing surgery. True. How come, yeah. how come everybody didn't die? Well, that's when they started insulating and have wood floors and wood homes and living indoors and so on. But but yeah, it's different in nature. In nature, mm -hmm. you in nature, your body has self-healing mechanisms that I mean, what goes on in the body is indescribable. Yeah. It's yeah. just too, too much. And, and we humans, we run around thinking, well, we do this, we do that, we take this and so on and so on. That's nonsense. The body knows everything. All you have to do is remove what's harming the body. The so body the body is... can heal. Yeah. And I've heard that so from so many other teachers that the body and even doctors, like the body is always striving to heal itself. Always. Yeah. We are in the way, whether it be with what we're eating, with the conditions, you know, of again, what we're wearing at our feet now, like, but the body yeah. is trying to heal itself. So if you have chronic stress, the body's still trying to heal itself. So what you're saying is get out and ground. I have a question. So is your grounding mat and the sheets, everything you can put on your bed, is that as powerful as bare feet on the ground? probably more because you don't have as much resistance you know mm. um, yeah well if the if the if the soil is moist it will be identical if the Got soil it. is a little bit dry it might be a little but it doesn't matter because we're not trying to light light bulbs here we're mm -hmm. just trying to keep a supply of negative charge yeah available to the body so the body can absorb or release and maintain electrical balance I, you know, you talked about like even our mattresses that we sleep on and the sheets and the static. I would never thought about all that. I'm like, here, I'm thinking I'm in good shape, but I'm sleeping and I'm realizing, oh my gosh, my friend has the grounding sheets. So I may have to go get, or the grounding pad that goes on the bed. I have to go get that now because I'm thinking, yeah. uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Yeah. Why does this, you said the static is not good in the, in the foam mattresses that we have. Well, static electricity is a, is a, is a, a, a modern phenomenon. Mm -hmm. you know um your body i mean it's like asthma and all these uh health disorders anytime you put an electrical charge on the body well everything in the body is electrical first so you put a charge out here and they influence each other mm -hmm. they can perturb electrons in the body it's like you know electric fields i mean they can if you're not grounded then these electric charges in your home cause your free electrons in your body to go zing 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 60 times a second so wow. half the time your body's not it can't function the way it would normally because it's electrons are being pushed or pulled yeah you know it's it's much bigger there's i would have to spend the rest of my life trying to explain it but but in nature it's all taken care of it's all automatic we it is so we, true yeah we are a piece of nature and we are a part of nature and we need to find our way back in 
And if grounding is essential to maintain the human immune system so that you can have health, mm -hmm. and I want to answer that question. 15 minutes is good. Any amount of grounding is good, but you need to stay grounded until the pain stops. Yes. And then as soon as the pain comes back up, then you get grounded. <laughs> but, but anyhow, um, but what the future, what has to happen in the future, all I've done is spent the last 25 years saying, hey, folks, there is a problem here. And we've got a 50 peer reviewed published studies now. That's absurd. Why do you have to tell people what you do? Um, because we have generations now that have never been without shoes. And yeah. um, so, <clears throat> mm. but this is a, such good stuff. Um, oh my goodness. So Everything is so simple. It is. Well, I know, you know, I walk and I do a hike or a walk every day. We have a ton of trees where I live and I'm on a lake. So I'm always like, I love nature and yeah. walking, you know, nature bathing, walking yeah. through yeah. nature. Now I have shoes on, but I feel so good when I'm done, yes. but it's cleaning out the whole energy field and all the things, but yeah. does it ground us? Well, if there's, I mean, you're going to get electrons one way or the other. Uh, it's not going to ground you if, as like if you were barefoot. Right. If you wanted to get really get clean up the circulation, clean, clean out the inflammation, you, you almost have to be barefoot or you have to have physical skin contact with the surface of the earth or a conductive. Now, mat. what if we're sitting out and we're sitting on a towel? That's not like, and your feet are on the towel. Your feet have to be right on the ground, right? No, because the towel is, if it's cotton towel, it's going to absorb moisture. Oh, okay. And, and, and it's like the sheets, the black carbon sheets. You know, we, we over the last 25 years, we developed a lot of products, not because we wanted to be in the product business, but because we had to run the tests and we would keep creating things and doing things to, to test the results. And uh, <clears throat> so- we learned that uh, we eventually stopped making the silver cotton sheets and things like that because they oxidize too quick and go bad and then people mm -hmm. aren't grounded and they, mm -hmm. they just cost too much and so on. So we ended up going with carbon, carbon mass. Interesting. And carbon, you know, your body's 99% carbon anyway. <laughs> but anyhow, so uh, we went with the carbon and we designed a mat that you just put over the mattress yeah. itself. And then you can put a sheet over the top of it. Then when you lay down, you're going to perspire sufficient. Mm -hmm. It's going to hydrate the sheet, mm -hmm. you know, with uh, body perspiration and the salt, body salts and so on. Not only that, you have a little bit of humidity in the room. Mm -hmm. And then there's humidity under the covers anyway. Right. So right. it becomes a very conductive environment. Mm. Um, you know, it's like, you know, the men want to light a light bulb with ground, ground wires. That's not the intent. You need a path for electrons to flow in and out of the body to yeah. maintain an electrical balance. You know, it's, it's, um, you know, it's, yeah, it's, um, it's pretty amazing all of it. It's very, very simple, but very, very complicated now because 60 years ago, we couldn't get off the earth. Now we can't touch the earth. Right. Isn't that can't crazy? Even go, <laughs> can't even go to a park because of, you know, the pets and the problems mm -hmm. that they have there. And, mm -hmm. and, and then we paved over everything and, it's really, so anyhow, what has to happen from here on, uh, the only thing we've done is make a few simple, very inexpensive, and most importantly, that function, to perform the function mm -hmm. at, you know, for years at a time. So what we try to do is come up with something that this is an interim step. Mm. You can ground yourself. Yep. And, and, but down the road, they have to, we, we are starting to come out with the grounded shoes. We're not going to be in the shoe business or anything like that. All we do is pilot, pilot everything, get them out there and, and, and tell everybody, say, there are people who want these, please come and make them. What about and Birkenstocks? Like Birkenstocks, were, is that cork or and leather at the bottom? That, that's insulative. I mean, cork would it be is. the insulative. Yeah. Yeah. cork. And, yeah. Uh, we have some Birkenstock type with the... Uh, that just came in. I'll send me your address and I'll send you up here. Yes, I love those. Uh, give me, send me a size anyway. And, um, but anyhow, I want to check uh, those out. Yeah, for sure. 
that, I mean, there's just so much that you offer and I'm so grateful for all of your work. Um, you talked about, I, I heard you one time talk about group grounding. You're with David Wolf or something and you had like 1500 people in a room. Yeah. How did you tell us about what did you do to ground everybody? And then what was the result? Cause that was, I remember that was fascinating what you did. Yeah. Well, first of all, you can ground one person right here and then you can have people start holding hands and you can go 100 people down, and the, the 100th person will still be grounded. And what that means is skin's conductive, bodies are conductive. So everyone in the group was conductive. Oh, wow. But anyhow, at, at the events, what we learned most of all about grounding is we can talk to people until we're blue in the face, but people are very challenged to grasp it mm -hmm. because they have no, no language. You know, mm -hmm. they don't have experience. So... Yeah. What I try to do is whenever we're talking or presenting grounding, I try to have them grounded at the same time. Mm -hmm. I grounded, I, you know, David Wolf, I grounded the first group we ever pulled together up in Santa Barbara. And they were in a park, I think. <laughs> and, and then, but anyhow, so grounding, he really fell in love with grounding. And, and he started carrying it for a few years. And, and then I don't know what happened to their organization. It was too bad. I kind of enjoyed them. Um, but the... Um, The, um, I'm sorry. What was the result of that 1,500 people or something that grounded? So, so what we would do, we we would they would lead or you know rent rooms or uh, convention space at a you know the Hyatt or uh, the Hilton down in Costa Mesa. So the first time I grounded, they only had like 150 people. So I went in and ran wire up and down each aisle, mm. put tape over the top of it, and then had a little alligator clip with a a quick little coil cord so then they could have a mm -hmm. mat to sit on or they could have patches to put on whatever paint mm -hmm. so everybody could use it while they were in the audience listening mm. for up to the three days so everybody would be grounded and what happened as soon as we grounded them within the first session after we started grounding them if you were at the table where they were selling these products you were risking your life because the people stormed out of there and they wanted <laughs> these things. And I remember one gal stood up in the middle of a meeting there and she says, how come somebody didn't tell me, hasn't told me about these? She says, here, I've been painting for years and whatever. And here I come and sit down and put this thing on my, and my pain is all gone. Wow. And then all of a sudden, so it just, it was hysterical. <laughs> That's crazy. It is crazy. I have to say, like we're big our whole family were all, I, even when the kids were little, we'd say, you know, get your shoes off, get out on the ground. I don't know. Again, I don't think I found you way back when 20 some years ago, but whenever I found you, I was like, and there it is right there. There's the evidence. Cause yeah. you've done so many great studies on this grounding and yeah. the importance of it with chronic pain. And I mean, any illness really, it's really yeah. I'm so grateful yeah. for your work. The discovery of grounding it's it's about the immune system. Yep. And, 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 you know, it's about inflammation because the immune system is dysfunctioning because it's no longer grounded. Yeah. And then we also learned what's feeding the inflammation. Yeah. It's not, it's not what you're eating. It's what's eating you. <laughs> right. Right. I love that. Well, gosh, thank you so much. Let people know where can they find you? I know you have a book or a thing. You have the movie. There, there's so much. So tell people what, where can they go learn more if they even want to learn more and where can they go find you and your products? Okay. Uh, the earthing Institute.net mm -hmm. or PubMed go to either one and you can type in earthing grounding and whatever. And <clears throat> there's some universe of a hundred studies out there. Love that. Uh, and all of our papers are published, all of our commentaries, reviews, all of that stuff. And then we have the Earthing Institute will answer questions if somebody mm. sends them in. And then uh, earthing.com is where all the products are sold. Mm -hmm. And the products range from $59 to you know, 200 something like that. We try to keep them as affordable as possible. But most important, the function is there. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so earthing.com is where most of them you know, are sold. We do sell them on Amazon also, but earthing, uh, we kind of great customer service and, they, and that's where you'll get most of your questions answered. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, we have the earthing movie, mm -hmm. which is I think pushing 12, 15 million views now. Wow. And then we have the 
you know, that's just the earthy movie, The Remarkable Science of Grounding or Earthing, whatever it is. And then we have the short down to earth video. That's probably 120 million. Wow. Yeah, it went viral within three months of the time we published it. 120 million. I, I remember watching a video. It's free. It was free on YouTube. I, I don't know if this is one of those about the little girl that was deathly ill and her mother literally took her shoes off and just had her earthing. Is that the movie? Yeah. And she healed yes. completely. It was, yes. it was a, the mother and the father. It was mind blowing. Yeah, and that was the first 15 minute video, I think. Yeah. So, so anyhow, um, I'm from my background is in television and video and stuff. So, uh, you know, I, I, I know that you have to be on TV. Yeah, <laughs> you have for to be sure. In video. You have to be yeah. on video. Yeah. And that's why I put most of our efforts and energy into that. And, yeah. and the thing that's interesting about grounding is we don't, have to really we don't really promote it much at all yeah because usually a woman finds it she has an autoimmune disease mm -hmm. first thing she does she wears one for her mom or gives the one she bought to her mom and she gets another one and then over the next year she will get a dozen different products for her mm -hmm. family members she doesn't try to educate them waste the time just mm -hmm. gets them sit and has them use it yeah. so this is a one of those mom businesses is moms taking care of moms, mm -hmm. older moms taking care of younger moms, younger moms taking care of younger moms. And um, it's, it's, and they love it because it works. That's all. Yeah. They don't, they don't need to know all the craziness behind it. Wow. It just, it just works, but it, it's nature. And so anyhow, uh, the earthing book, it, there's well over a million in circulation published in 23 different languages. Mm. and um again that's a book that's never been marketed it's just a word about book <laughs> yeah well obviously that says it's pretty pop popular and people love it because you've not marketed this thing and it's got that many copies sold that's impressive so yeah wow. we had to we had to grow as we could afford to grow yeah <laughs> so, uh, we, we're not out to try to kill change the world or kill the world just saying hey there's an issue here we need to solve it Ah, oh, well, thank you. I, I, I love that you have studies on that. I mean, it's just amazing work that you're doing. Thank you for all you've done for this world and this planet, because goodness well, gracious, we need you. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for having me on. I really enjoyed it. I could talk to you for hours. but I know this is um, fun. Thank about, you so much. Especially about women. Anyhow, <laughs> well, I appreciate you being here. <laughs> they're what make the world go round. We do make the world go round. That's true. Yeah. All right. <laughs> thank you Namaste. so much. Namaste. Namaste. All right, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed that show today. I told you he's a wealth of information. I hope that you enjoyed the show. Definitely hit me up on social. I look forward to hearing all about it and what your experience is with grounding. Yeah. I mean, it's something that we can do through meditation, using grounding mats, putting our feet on the ground, all the things. So can't wait to hear what you think. Have a beautiful, beautiful week, you guys. And I'll see you right here seated next week in the adult chair.